Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and you're watching Dude Ranch DIY. Today we're gonna start off by doing the 400 hour maintenance on my Kubota L3901 tractor. Um, as you can see right here, I have pretty much everything we're gonna need. Everything from hydraulic fluid to engine oil, air filter, oil filter, fuel filter, transmission filter, hydraulic filter, the whole nine yards. So I'm quickly going to do that and then hopefully we will have some time and we might be playing around with a little cedar log for a special little project. Okay, so as you can see here, I have this handy checklist printed out and laminated um, with all the service intervals and everything that we need to do. Um, so we are going to be going down this 400 column and doing all these big ticket items listed with the star, including the engine oil, the engine oil filter, water separator cleaning, uh, the transmission oil filter, and uh, so on and so forth. So I have the tractor warming up outside over here. Yesterday it was like 60 degrees, today it barely broke freezing and we had snow showers. Um, so. Go figure, I guess we got a couple more days of winter before we can get to that spring right around the corner. All right guys, so here's everything that we're gonna need. As you can see, I like to label all the filters before I put them on with the date and how many hours are on the tractor. Now we're doing the 400 hour service just because it's right before spring and the uh, busy season. So I have time to do it and I work the tractor hard enough. So I'm doing it, you can see a little bit like under 40 hours uh, soon, but or early, but you know, that's all right. So we got the engine oil filter, trans oil, fuel filter, and hydro. Um, and then we have the air filter element right here. So let's get to work. Thank you. 
All right, so I'm gonna be putting the fresh oil in now. I got uh, the good stuff, the Shell Rotella 10W30, heavy duty diesel. Um, I was gonna be using this funnel just because it goes a little bit quicker, it's a big opening. But um, when you try and put this in here, you can see in there kind of in that oil fill that there's like something kind of blocking it, like some cooling fins or something. So I'm gonna have to use this funnel that's flexible with this screen, it kind of slows it down, but it uh, it goes in there real well. So we'll try that. So it takes 7.1 quarts. I got two gallons, so just shy of two gallons. Says it takes 7.1 quarts, so there we put in seven quarts. Let's check the dipstick over here. Dipstick on these is in a funny spot. It's over here on the left side, and you can barely see it. So we want it to be in between those two tick marks, preferably towards the higher side. See what we got. So we are right at, actually just a little bit above the level, which is perfect because that's a brand new oil filter, so it's gonna eat some up. We will check that again once we start it up and uh, fill up that new oil filter with oil. Let's start her back up now that she's all buttoned up and uh, let her warm back up and we'll see where our oil level's at. Okay, let's check it again. Yep, right at that high level mark. So we're good to go. All right, next up we got our trans oil. I do have my drip pan down below, you just can't see it. Gonna grab some of that, put it on my O-ring right here. Take for a smooth switch. You don't lose too much doing this one. Now with these, do it till it makes contact right there, and then do another one and a quarter turn. <clears throat> or a quarter turn, sorry. Okay. And that's that. And it just so happens my markings are right where I can read them. Okay, next we're going to do the main hydraulic filter, which is right here on the right side of the tractor underneath the floorboard. I'm going to show you a little trick. You can lose quite a bit of fluid coming out of that one. So if you come back here to the oil fill, pop the cap, 
and then I'm going to show you a little trick how you can potentially not lose quite as much fluid. So by taking your standard run-of-the-mill shop vac, it just so happens that most of these hoses and everything fit right over that, actually pretty snug. So if you put that on there like that, and turn on the shop vac, create some suction while you are swapping out this filter, you don't lose quite as much fluid. So here we go. So that worked really well. Last time I did this, I had hydraulic fluid dumping out everywhere, lost well over a gallon. Um, you can see these hydraulic fluids or filters take quite a beating when they uh, come off. This one might have been over tightened, but it says right on there, do it hand tight and then another two thirds of a turn. So that's what I did here. Um, so hopefully next time, now I'm at 800 hours. This thing uh, should come off a little bit easier, but not much fluid lost at all. I don't know if you were able to hear, but you could kind of hear the fluid in there, kind of like gurgling around from the vacuum. So that definitely helped quite, quite a bit. All right, we just lost a little bit of fluid, hydraulic fluid that is, um, when we did that last filter there. So. Just gonna do a quick check on it and uh, also clean up around here. This wasn't the best spot I feel for uh, Kubota to put this check. Because although it is convenient and it's right there in your face, it, it's prone to get extremely dirty right there from your feet. So it's always a little tough to clean it without getting the dirt back down in the check hole. So now let's check. I don't know if you could see, but we are still well within our limits, so I can start up the machine and uh, we can see how much fluid goes into that filter and if it drops down any, but I'm going to check it one more time. Yeah, we're still above, just slightly above the, the full mark there, so I think we should be good. Okay. Just let it run for a minute. Let's recheck our level. Yep, it sucks some up. So now we are pretty much right at that high mark there. So good to go. Also, if anybody owns an L3901 or a standard L series, um, you know that it doesn't come with uh, any of those nice rubber floor mats. Um, so I'm wearing a nice spot on the, uh, the metal here. If anybody knows of a uh, company that makes a rubber floor mat, I would be greatly interested to hear that. Um, if not, I might just have to come up with my own little thing, maybe a horse stall mat or something. Okay, next thing we got is the fuel filter, which is right here. Just going to... Wipe off the old one.
Okay, so we just did the fuel filter. Um, now, because we just introduced air into the fuel system, we have to bleed the fuel system, which uh, involves loosening up this screw, filling up the gas tank completely, and then cycling the key on and off um, just to purge the air out of the system. Just so happens that the tractor's at like a quarter tank. Um, it's three quarter empty. I have 10 gallons of diesel fuel in cans in the back of the truck. So that works out perfect. I'm gonna fill her up and then I will loosen up the screw and show you how to bleed the system quick. Okay, so not only did I just drop the little ring that indicates the level in your water fuel separator into the drip pan, I just dropped my little pick as well that I was using to try and pry the ring out. So now I have to drain the oil pan into containers to be able to get the two missing pieces out of there. So definitely don't do that. Okay guys, so like I just said, I dropped that little O-ring and the little pick down into the oil, um, you know, catch pan. So, of course that happened. Now, my two buckets that I have, which I don't really care which one I use, but I'd like to use one of them to dump all the oil into, they are stuck. I cannot get them undone, you know. Somebody once said there are no, or the two greatest forces in the world are duct tape and stuck five gallon buckets, but I have a trick for that. So, one, turn on your air compressor. Once your air compressor has a little bit of pressure, take your gun and watch this. Bada bing, bada boom. No more stuck buckets. We just broke one of the strongest forces in nature. A little bit of hot air. All right, let's go find our tools. All right, I'm just gonna wipe this up quickly so that I don't spill this slop all over the place. That's good enough. Throw my cap on. Let's hope we can find these two. There's my pick. Oh. And there's my ring. So, all in all, not too bad. I was gonna have to drain that bucket out anyway to, uh, or drain the reservoir out anyway into a bucket, so now we got it done. Now the manual says to clean everything out, as you can see, there's a bunch of dirt and stuff in there, and uh, to clean it out with some diesel fuel. So here's my element, got it all, got it all coffee mug, coffee container, jug, whatever. Throw a little bit of diesel in there. And give that a good shake. All 
clean. So now we're gonna reinstall this. Just kind of pops up there like that. And then screw this back on. Okay, so now that that's all back on, the fuel system is full. As you saw, we're going to turn back on the fuel valve, which on is in the down position. So just a 10 millimeter wrench, we're gonna go and pop open this bleeder valve, or bleeder nut, bolt. Said, just do about two turns. So, that's about two. So now I'm going to turn the key to the on position, wait about a minute, and then after that, we are going to start it up. Okay, so sitting on the tractor, I am putting the key to the on position, and we're going to wait one minute. Okay, so we waited about a minute. And there we go. Said to let it run for a little bit and then raise the idle up to force any remaining air out of the system. So we will do that. I forgot to mention the step that after you have the key in the on position for 60 seconds, you re-tighten back up this 10 millimeter bolt, the little breather bolt, and then you continue to start the motor up. So now that it's been running for a little bit, we're gonna rev it up. just to force out any remaining air in the system. Okay, the last and final thing we're gonna be doing today is placing the air filter, which is probably the easiest one to do. Pop that cap off, old filter, new filter. That was easy. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up this video here. It's getting pretty cold and the sun's going down, but we got the 400 hour service done. A little bit early on the Kubota L3901 here, but we got the uh, all the filters changed and the oil changed and everything. So we are in good shape heading into the spring and summer. The next time we have to do a major service will be in another 400 hours. Um, so we got plenty of time until that happens. Uh, so I hope this was helpful for anybody that has a similar tractor or tractor or an L series tractor, um, or you just found it entertaining. Um, as always guys, thanks for watching the videos. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button down below. We just recently hit, hit 4,000 subscribers, so that's awesome. Really appreciate all you guys watching the videos. Any questions, comments, or feedback, stick it down in the comments section below. But for now, I'm Jake. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.